Hello, I'm Svetlin Naku from Soft Unique Global. This is the next episode from my Dev Concept series. In this video lesson, I will make an overview of software engineering and concepts like software quality assurance, QA, bugs and bug trackers, unit testing and testing frameworks, source control systems like Kit, and project repositories like GitHub, and also project management tools, project trackers, and Kanban boards. In this lesson, you will learn about software development lifecycle phases, like requirements, design, construction, testing, release and maintenance, and how modern developers go through these phases by following an agile methodologies like Scrum or Kanban or other. I will explain what software quality assurance is and how QA engineers do manual and automated testing, bug tracking and quality reviews and why QA is a crucial part of creating software. I will discuss the concept of unit testing or how to write, execute and maintain automated code-based tests for your software components. I will show you how to use source control systems like GitHub, how to clone a repository, how to make changes in the code, how to commit and push your work to the remote repositories and similar tasks. At the end of the lesson, I will explain and demonstrate the concept of project trackers or how to organize your work as project tasks and track the project progress when working in a team. Every topic in today's lesson is supported with real life examples and live demonstrations, so I'm sure you'll get a good understanding of them. Please don't forget to leave comments uh, saying what topics you would like to see on this channel and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my next lesson. All right, are you ready? Let's learn about software engineering. Do you know that software engineering is not just coding? Because software engineers deal with many other aspects of software production and maintenance, which are far beyond coding and debugging. The complete software development lifecycle, SDOC, includes activities like requirement analysis, software design, software construction, software testing and deployment, and also maintenance, and they are mixed together with software project management activities. All these activities are part of every software project, to some extent, and they are performed by the project team in a form which is defined by the software development methodology used in this project. Sounds interesting? Okay, let's learn more about all these concepts and activities from software development, which are far beyond programming. Software engineering provides methodologies, concepts, principles, technologies, patterns, practices and tools for requirement analysis, software architecture and design, software construction and implementation, software testing and quality assurance, deployment and maintenance, together with software project management. Let's talk about all these concepts and activities from software development, which are beyond programming. Software engineering is not just coding. The software development lifecycle SLDC, SDLC, uh, always include the following activities to some extent. Requirements analysis, software design, uh, software, software construction, uh, software testing, deployment uh, and maintenance together with project management. Requirement analysis, uh, also called requirement engineering, uh, is the first phase of software pro projects. Requirement analysis is the process of determining the business expectations functionalities and constraints for a software product, site, app, service or system. Software requirements uh, define the functionality of the system. They consist of functional requirements, what the system should do, and non-functional requirements like performance and technical constraints. 
In software engineering, the requirements are described as formal or informal documentation, functional specifications, user story cards, or UI prototypes. Gathering and describing the requirements is the job of business analysts. They are people who talk with the user and project stakeholders and describe the processes, data flow and software requirements in a way understandable for software developers. Without clear requirements, writing software is messy and unproductive. Gathering clear requirements is an important step at the start of any software project, but it usually was to some extent throughout the whole life of the project. Software architecture and design are the technical plans and blueprints uh, to how to implement the software requirements. The system architecture describes how the system will be decomposed into subcomponents, tires, modules, components, etc., and the interaction between these subsystems. This phase also includes the initial design of the data model, the database design. During the architecture and design phase of the software, the software architects or senior developers decide on the development stack, platforms and technologies, and tools to be used for development. The technical design typically gives the big picture for the system and its structure. The detailed design is usually created during the software construction when developers implement the system. Software construction is the phase in which developers create the software. It is also called the implementation phase uh, because developers write the code to implement the planet functionality. During the implementation, Uh, developers not only write code, but they also debug and test the code and fix bugs, take decisions how to implement certain functionalities, search for libraries and tools for certain functionalities, design and implement the backend APIs, implement the user interface of the system, write automated tests such as unit tests and integration tests, and integrate different system components. The construction takes most of the time and resources during the development. Software testing uh, and quality assurance confirms that the developed software conforms to the requirements. Software testing and verification is performed by the quality assurance engineers, QA engineers. QA engineers test the code by performing manual and automated testing and report bugs in the bug tracking system and track the work on fixing the bugs later. Software release and deployment is the process of building the software packages uh, from its source code, publishing the new versions of the software on a testing environment and after automating and sometimes manual testing, uploading the new version of, to the production environment. Release and deployment deals with containers, cloud, servers, builds, installation, configuration and administration of the testing and production environments. Deployment is usually performed first in a testing environment, a staging server, then the product is tested and then deployed in production. The entire process is typically automatic, automated following DevOps practices and processes. Software release and deployment is performed by the DevOps engineers. 
or senior developers who write scripts to automate this process and implement the so-called continuous delivery. Software maintenance is the process of monitoring the software and maintaining its normal work, updating the software runtime environments, platforms and libraries, patching security problems, bug fixing, enhancing existing features and adding new functionalities to address the changing requirements. Software maintenance is usually a long lasting process that is going on for years. and is sometimes mixed with active development of new features. Software project management is responsible for the planning, scheduling, resource allocation, execution, tracking and delivery of software projects. Project managers or software team leaders are responsible for defining tasks. prioritizing and scheduling the tasks and tracking them and controlling the work progress during the entire software development lifecycle. Project management is very important for the success of any software projects, so it needs experienced people to handle it responsibly. All the above mentioned activities from the software development lifecycle are organized by software development methodologies, development processes or process frameworks such as Waterfall, Scrum and Kanban. The development process defines the project workflow and development philosophy, key management, organizational and engineering practices. Most systems in modern software engineering are implemented in the spirits of Agile development. Agile development builds software feature by feature and developers iteratively design and build new features, integrate them, deploy them, uh, collect feedback, fix the problems uh, and proceed with the next feature until the project is completed. Software development lifecycle, software project management uh, and development methodologies are broad topic in software engineering, which developers learn for years during their career growth as they gain experience. Junior developers should be familiar with all these concepts but cannot be experts. Software Quality Assurance, or QA, provides methodologies, practices, and tools for ensuring the quality of the software products and systems and the development process. The heart of the QA process is software testing, the process of checking whether the software conforms to the requirements and works as expected. Testing can be manual, performed by hand, or automated performed by a script or a software robot. Testing aims to find bugs which are reported and tracked in a bug tracking software. Let's now learn more about QA testing and bug tracking. Software quality assurance, QA, is an important topic in software development. What is a software quality assurance, QA? Software quality assurance provides methodologies, practices and tools for ensuring the quality of the software products and systems and the development process. Software quality assurance goes beyond the quality of the software. It also includes the quality of the process used to develop, test and release the software. The software quality assurance is performed by QA engineers. QA engineers test the software, its functionality, usability, security, and other aspects, report and track bugs, and track the development process and its quality. 
in the heart of the QA process is software testing. Software testing is the process of checking whether the software conforms to the requirements and works as expected. Software testing aims to find bugs or defects in the software and report them for fixing. Software testing can be manual or automated. Manual testing is done by hand using the keyboard and the mouse. The QA engineer clicks the software UI, fills and submits forms, interacts with the software UI, or invokes backend operations by hand or by specialized tools, executes certain functionality, validates that it works correctly, and tries to find defects. Manual testing also involves testing the user experience, UX, the user interface, and the visual look and feel of the software. It also focuses on testing the UI and the behavior in different environments, web browsers and hardware devices, as well as checking security and other aspects. Automated testing is done by scripts and programs which perform robotic checks of the software. Instead of clicking the UI controls, filling and submitting forms by hand, QA automation engineers record scripts and write programs to, do auto, to automate this and to check whether the software behaves correctly without human intervention. Thus, QA automation experts are software development engineers in test. In addition to testing, there are few other approaches in software quality assurance. Code reviews and quality inspections are proactive approaches to software quality. They aim to catch defects and bad practices early before they appear in the functionality. Such practices are typically done by senior developers or senior QA engineers. Code reviews aim to enforce good practices for internal code quality, such as writing understandable and maintainable code, avoiding repeating code, using clear abstractions, formatting the code correctly, naming identifiers correctly, structuring the code in clear way, and many others. Quality inspections try to find problems in the code by understanding the program logic and internal design. The goal of the testing process is to find and report bugs uh, or defects and issues with the software. Reported bugs are described, submitted and tracked in a issue tracking software. or simply bug tracker. In the issue tracker, developers and QA engineers discuss the issues, prioritize them, assign them to team members, track the word on the issues and the changes of their status, confirm when an issue is fixed and finally close it. Issue trackers uh, track not only the defects, but also new features, feature requests and other issues with the software. Software quality assurance is a broad to topic in software engineering and is a separate profession in many software companies. QA engineers should have basic software development and technical skills, skills and strong attention to the details and quality to be diligent and patient and to work persistently on the software quality, testing and test automation. As an example of QA engineering work, let's look at a sample issue tracker. The above link 
opens the public issue tracker of the Bootstrap project, which is a popular responsive design framework. Let's see what's inside. We have uh, a few hundreds of open unfinished bugs and a few thousands of closed or completed bugs issues. In the GitHub, uh, it, in the GitHub issue tracker, it should have title, descriptions, labels, and commands. Some issues can have also assigned developer. Uh, attachments, projects and milestone, but let's focus on the concepts of issue tracking. Not on technical details. Let's view what's inside an open issue. This is the description that begins with a description of the problem and then commands follow. Closed issues are similar but they are either fixed or refuse to be fixed for some reason. Unit tests are pieces of code that test specific functionality in certain software component, which is also called a unit. It is performed by software developers using testing frameworks and testing tools. Okay, let's now learn more about unit testing. Unit testing is an important concept and practice in software development. Unit tests are pieces of code that test specific functionality in certain software component called unit. Unit tests are written by developers, not by QA engineers. Unit tests are part of the production source code. They aim to improve the code quality, reliability, and maintainability. This is a sample uh, a simple example to illustrate the idea of unit testing. We have a function which sums the elements of given array of numbers. We want to test this function, but not by hand. We want to write code which confirms that this function works correctly. In this example, uh, we can see how we can test the sum function. We write a function to hold the test classes, the test cases. This is the first test case. The first check, it checks whether the sum of the two array elements, one comma two is three. If the execution result is not as expected, the function will fail with an error message. The second check test, uh, tests whether the sum of the array holding a single element minus two is minus two. The third test checks whether the sum of an empty array is zero. 
This example is just a simple way to illustrate the concept of unit testing. Don't follow it as back practice. It's not. It's, it's not. It combines multiple test cases in a single test function, and this is a bad practice. But the idea of unit testing is clear. Unit tests execute the code with sample input data and entrance conditions and check whether the returned result, exit conditions and behaviors are correct. Unit testing is usually performed within a unit testing framework which organizes and structures the test consistently. Unit testing frameworks simplify structure and organize the unit testing process. Unit testing frameworks execute the tests and generate reports. Unit testing frameworks uh, developers of the unit of the framework developers use the framework to structure the tests to organize uh, them in hierarchy using cases and functions to assert the execution results and exit conditions for correctness to handle some specific situations like expected error or expected timeout and to automate some aspects of the testing process like initializing the testing environment startup and cleaning it up at shutdown. Examples of unit testing uh, frameworks are the Mocha testing framework for JS and the JUnit testing framework for Java. This is an example of how the test cases from the previous example can be structured within the Mocha framework uh, for JavaScript. We first include the required libraries, uh, then we define a test suite. This is a group of related unit tests. Within the test suits, we define our first test. It holds uh, a function to check whether the sum of the array 1, 2 is 3. The second test follows the same syntax. It checks whether the sum of the array minus 2, a single element, is as expected, minus 2. Similarly, the third uh, test checks whether the sum of an empty array is 0. That's all. When we run the tests, we see a text execution report like this shown on the screenshot. I don't want to go into deeper details. The concept is well illustrated. Perhaps I need to mention that unit testing has not only its technical side to use correctly the testing framework and libraries. It has also the engineering side to decide what and how to test. Unit test writers usually follow the AAA pattern arrange the input data and entrance condition, act, execute the function for testing, and assert whether the results and exit conditions are as expected. Testing usually covers the straightforward case, the typical case of the function, the edge cases, such as empty array or negative numbers, testing for performance, error handling, security, etc.
Testing should be enough to find the bugs and potential problems and not too much because it takes time to write and maintain the test cases. Tools for measuring the so-called code coverage can give a good sign whether a function uh, is tested enough or not. Developers should be familiar with unit testing and test automation, even junior developers. We shall learn in detail the concept of unit testing and how to use unit testing frameworks, how to write efficiently unit tests and integration tests, how to use tools like code coverage and mocking in the advanced programming training modules at SoftUni. Now let's see the process of unit testing with the Mocha framework with a wife code example. We open the link to the sample project at RepoWith. It takes some time to load, as usually. The file index.js uh, holds the function we want to test. The file index.test.js holds the unit tests. We run the example. The output is colorful report on past and failed tests. One of the tests seems to have failed an empty array test. If you look at the code of the sum function, We shall find the problem. It starts from the element at position 0, which does not exist in empty arrays. We can fix the bug and run the tests again, but I shall leave this exercise for you. Source control systems keep the source code and other project assets in a shared repository in the network or in internet. Software developers can clone a repository or make a copy of it in their local hard disk, then they pull the latest version of the code, then they edit the code and commit and push the local changes. Sometimes they merge the conflicting changes that other developers make and thus they collaborate with the other team members from their development team to work in a shared code or in a shared project. Git is the world's most used source control software. It is the number one in uh, working and cooperation between developers when they work on a shared code. And GitHub and GitHub.com is the number one platform for Git project hosting and development cooperation for open source software and not only. Okay, let's learn more about Git, GitHub and source control systems. Source control systems are critical for the software development process and coding in a team. Virtually all major companies and software development teams use source control systems. There are no exceptions. If you are a developer, you should know how to work with source control systems like Git and SVN. Source control or version control uh, is a concept of software engineering used every day by millions of developers. Source control systems keep the source code and other projects assets in a shared repository available through the internet uh, or in a local environment. Developers can clone a repository, pull uh, the latest version of the code, commit and push local changes, and merge the conflicting changes and collaborate with other developers. They can also view the change walks, project history, compare different versions of the same file and restore previous versions 
branch the source code into separate line of development and many others. Git is the most popular source control system in modern software development. It is a distributed source control system, a very powerful tool for version control and team collaboration at the source code level. Git is the system behind GitHub, the largest software project hosting portal in the world. Other popular version control systems are TFS, SVN, Performs, Perforce and others. GitHub is the number one site for Git project hosting and developer collaboration. It hosts almost all major open source projects from the software industry. GitHub provides Git hosting, issue tracker, project tracker, build system, and many other tools for developers and team collaboration. Millions of developers use GitHub every day to sync and commit source code and documentation, track, review, and control changes in the code, branch and merge code, manage, discuss, and track issues, manage project plans, uh, task and schedule, build, test, and deploy projects. Developers today should be familiar with Git and GitHub. At SoftUni, we teach the concepts of source, source control systems and how to use Git and GitHub early in our end-to-end -end educational program for software developers to enable students to create a portfolio of practical projects which helps them to start their first developer job. Let's illustrate how we can use Git and GitHub through a few examples. We shall clone a GitHub repository, edit a local file, commit the local changes and push them to GitHub. We'll work with this sample uh, Git repository, http github.com slash softuni slash playground. First, let's look at it. Uh, it holds several files Uh, code plus documentation. As a concept, source control repository hold the source code and other assets of a software project. We first clone the sample repository to a local directory using the git clone command. git clone the repository we must have pre-installed the git client software on the local machine we start the system console which is also called uh, terminal window or command prompt then we type the following code on the command line git clone uh, HTTPS, github.com, softuni, playground. This will create a local copy of the specified repository in the playground subdirectory of the current directory. Now, we can modify uh, a local file, for example, the readme.md. Uh, we can use a text editor uh, of choice, such as notepad. We can open the file with notepad by the following code, notepad readme.md. Now, add a new line. Uh, in the file and save it. 
Now we have a modified file on the local disk. We want to commit the pending changes uh, so that they enter the local repository and are tracked in the version control system. We will run the following command at the console. git add dot and git commit hyphen m edit something this command adds any new files to the repository uh, and commits uh, all pending changes. When we commit the changes, we need to leave a message and explanations of the changes we make. Now we have a local repository which holds changes. We can change files and commit our work many times. These changes are still not sent to GitHub. To send the local commits to the remote repository at GitHub, we can, we can execute the following command. git push. This command needs the current git user to have permissions to write in the remote repository and it may ask for username and passwords or other method of authentication. Uh, now we can open the repository from the github website and see the changes. We can see the content of the changed files. We can also review the commits here. The change log and what was changed in each commit. Please focus on the concepts rather than on the comments on their parameters. Uh, the concepts here are that source control systems keeps the source code in a remote repositories. And we can clone these repositories, edit files, commit the changes and push the commits to the original repository. This workflow allows different team members to work together on a shared source code. To illustrate better the teamwork with Git, I will execute an interesting web demonstration. Uh, I will simulate the work of two developers, Alice and Bob. Alice will use my Windows command prompt and Bob will use my Linux bash shell, the bool console window. Okay. Alice clones the playground repository from her Windows machine.
git clone https github.com slash softunis slash playground and enters in the quant directory cd playground and displays the files inside it here the same does Bob from his Linux machine. Okay, git quote on https github.com slash soft uni slash uh, playground and cd playground ls hyphen ll. Now Alice and Bob make changes in their local working copies of the repository. Alice edits the file hello.txt. Notepad hello.txt. She types hello from Alice. Uh, Bob edits the files readme.md and hello.txt. MC edit readme dot readme dot md and he types this file was edited by Bob. MC edit hello.txt and he types at the end hello from pop. Now Alice commits her changes in her local repository. Git add dot git command if on m changes from Alice now Bob commits his changes in his local repository to git add dot git commit slash aim changes from Bob. Now Alice sends her changes to GitHub. git push The changes are successfully stored at GitHub. Now Bob 
tries to send his changes to GitHub. Git push. Wow. This operation will be rejected due to conflicting changes. Bob should merge the changes from Alice. Git pull. The automatic merge files for the file hello.txt and we shall uh, it says merge conflict in hello.txt and we shall fix the conflict manually. MC edit hello.txt and we edit the file by hand. Now we commit the changes made to merge the conflicting files. Git add everything. Git commit with message Bob merges his changes and finally Bob will be able to push his changes successfully. Git push. We can see the changes at the GitHub website. We can also see the commits in the commit walk. We can see the last three commits changes from Alice, changes from Bob, Bob, and Bob merges his changes. Uh, looks complex. It is not so complex like it looks. Um, focus on the concepts here. Kit allows developers to work concurrently on the same project and to merge concurrent changes. How exactly we handle concurrent changes with Git, we shall learn in the upcoming courses and lessons at SoftUnion. Project trackers like Trello and Jira organize and track project tasks. These tools are widely used to manage the project schedule, track the work done by each team member, and to visualize and track the project progress. Project trackers are used everywhere in project management, not only in the software industry. Most popular project tracking tools use a concept called Kanban board, where the project tasks are typically split into three groups. Backlog, in progress and done. In this section, I'll explain the concept of project tracking and I'll demonstrate how to use Trello to organize a project board and visualize and manage the project tasks. 
Tasks may have description, subtasks, assigned people, headline, uh, and other details such as commands, attachments, and others. Project trackers are simple to, to manage the project schedule and plan the uh, arrange, assign, track, and visual project tasks. Project trackers are important concept in software project management and in project management in general. Most project trackers visualize and organize the works of the project as Kanban board. Kanban board is an agile project management tool uh, designed to help to visualize work, limit work in progress and maximize teams efficiently. Kanban boards use cards arranged in columns. Uh, each card describes a task to be done or issue to be handled. Typical columns uh, on the Kanban board are backlog, in progress, and done. The backlog a column holds the queue of the tasks which are waiting to be done. Usually the task stays upper in the backlog uh, have a higher priority. The in progress column holds the tasks which are currently taken by the team. These tasks should not exceed the capacity of the team. The done column uh, holds the completed tasks. Team members take tasks from the backlog, move them to the in progress column, work on them, and when a task is completed, it is moved to done column. Then the next, next task is taken. The tasks move from left to right over the time. The current project progress is always clearly visible at the Kanban board. On a daily or a weekly basis, the project manager checks the project progress, discusses the tasks uh, and their priorities with the team and rearranges the order of the tasks in the backlog. This process is agile. Tasks and their priorities change regularly but the project team always knows the project progress and which task to take next according to the priorities, the order of the tasks in the backlog. Examples of project tracking software in the Kanban board style are the following products. Trello, a nice project tracker with pleasant UI. It has a free version. GitHub projects, uh, a project tracker built in GitHub. It is not much popular because its UX uh, is not good. And Office 365 Planner, which is a project planner from Microsoft, part of Office 365. Let's see in practice the concept of project trackers and Kanban boards. At the link above, we have a project tracker in Trello. This is the project plan for a simple website, which consists of several pages, home, about, services, portfolio, career, and contacts. The project plan visualizes all the tasks of the project. The backlog lists 
the backlog uh, list shows the waiting tasks which are not yet started. The in progress list shows the tasks which are taken. The done list shows the completed tasks. We can move tasks from one column to another. Or rearrange tasks. Add or edit and delete tasks. Simple but efficient tool to organize uh, out the work in a team. You should try it. I hope you understand the concepts here. Project trackers are a great tool to organize, track and manage the work on a project in a team. It is used by software development teams to plan, track and manage their work. Projects which are not efficiently managed fail. Efficient development teams use efficient project management. Did you like this lesson? Do you want more? Join the learners community at softunit.org. Subscribe to my YouTube channel to get more free video tutorials on coding, dev concepts and software development. Get access to more free dev lessons and learning resources for developers. Get free help from mentors and meet other learners. And it's all free. Join now, softunit.org. Check out my other videos from the Dev Concept series where I explain and demonstrate many concepts and technologies from the software development profession. Type in the comments below what topic you would like to see next. Goodbye, see you in my next video.